so I moved the laser assembly inside because it was getting way too cold to work in the garage. I'm just going to talk a bit about laser alignment, which a few people asked me questions on. Um, the laser tube is there. It's the big glass tube, as you can see. And we've got bounce mirrors, one, two, and we've got a laser head, which is fitted to the sliding part of the gantry. Um, all right, I use a couple of tools to do laser alignment. The most important one being a visible laser because it's almost impossible to align the CO2 laser. Um, I also use this, which is a motor mount that I've uh, affixed to a wooden block. And I use this, which is an old bounce mirror um, from the original Chinese laser that I had. I made a slight modification to that, if you can see that. Um, focus, there we go. Um, added springs to the back of it, which make it a lot easier to use. And what else? Um, oh, masking tape. Lots and lots of masking tape. Don't get this stuff. This is the expensive stuff. Uh, get the cheap stuff because you just burn it. Okay, so let's get this thing set up and I'll show you Before what I start, do. One thing I did want to mention was this armature assembly that I use for a laser alignment. Very simple. Cut on a CNC, uh, two hinged arms and a simple crosshair, which you can see there made by drilling four holes and putting some cotton through it. So I have a crosshair that I can use for doing or maintaining near field alignment. Focus, anyone? It's not going to focus. All right. Um, I have the crosshair for doing near field alignment and I'll be using the mirror adjustment screws for doing far field alignment. I made some slip covers for the two alignment mirrors here using some KNS brass sheet and it's just literally brass sheet folded over. Uh, slides over the top just like that and it's a good way to keep the mirror safe when you're not using the laser but what I've done here is I put a piece of masking tape on both slip covers and on the uh, motor mount stand that I showed you earlier and if you can just make that out it's difficult uh, I put some on the laser head and I marked a small cross it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle but as close to the mirror middle as you can get it so the first thing is we've got to figure out the path of the beam. Well, I put one of the slip covers on this mirror here. I'm going to shoot the beam from the laser head off this uncovered bounce mirror and it's going to strike that uh, slip cover there and show us where it's going. So I'm just going to fire it now. There we go. So that's roughly, that is roughly where that thing hit. Okay, that's step one. Step two, let's put the slip cover on here. We'll do exactly the same thing. Obviously, each time you install a slip cover, you are blocking the beam from hitting the next mirror. Let's do that again. And it helps to blow on the masking tape as soon as you hit it because it will catch fire and it will burn. So, finally, I'm going to put this in the path of the beam and we're going to get a reference on there too and I really am going to have to blow on this really quick because it is going to catch fire and burn the whole thing. There we go. Okay well I goofed because I slipped it. I moved it. We'll do that again. <laughs> Cut. Okay this time I didn't get that on camera but you get the general idea. I actually held it with my finger. Keep your finger out of the way of the beam obviously because you'll feel it and I punched a hole there. Now the trick is to get this laser which is a laser level Harbour Freight Special uh, to follow the same path. And the first thing we do is insert a bounce mirror into the path, like so, like that. There we go, you can see that there. That is approximately the same place as the laser head. And now we mount this here. And as you can see, uh, first thing you need to do is keep it level, obviously that's why a, le a level is important. I've actually leveled it using some spacer washers and we'll get that aligned correctly and hopefully we will have the red laser tracing the same path as the CO2 laser. Okay, hopefully you can see that there, but what's going on? The laser is striking the bounce mirror, passing through the hole the CO2 laser cut in the original uh, cover and or stand and it's striking the spot on the mirror where the CO2 laser hits. So that's not bad. You're never going to get it perfect, but close enough is good enough. Then when we remove that and we inspect where it's hitting on the other mirror, we'll see that's not bad. That's almost exactly the little bit of tweaking. We can get that 
almost exactly on the spot where the CO2 laser hit. So that's not bad. That's pretty well aligned. Now if we remove this cover, you can see that it is striking the target. Now, this is actually aligned correctly, so I'm not going to make any adjustments, but I will just say this. What you need to do now is move the laser backwards and forwards and get it so that the spot does not move on that target. And what that's done is that has got a parallel beam running along the length of the gantry, which is exactly what we want. And try to keep the timing belts out of the way too. Don't get them fried by the laser. And that's not bad, the where, where it is now. That is actually staying pretty much exactly where I want it to be all the way along. There are two points that you need to align. One is near field and one is far field. This is the near field position. And what you can do, or what I have done, is using my jig, or my tool, to get which one's which, you bring this in, if I can do that, a fairly cluttered workspace here. Let's bring this in here. And move it so that it actually strikes Oh, that's no good. Hang on. Cut. I'm going to have to adjust something. Okay, got everything adjusted correctly. This is what I wanted to show you here. This is marking the near field position, where now I can move this one back to the far field position. You've got to keep the red dot on the center of here and on the center of there. And you do it by adjusting the near position with this mirror, the far position with that mirror. And the beauty of having a visible laser is you can keep it on permanently and as you twist the little knobs you can see what it's doing. You can see how it's moving whereas with using the CO2 alone you can only ever pulse the laser when you've got your hands out of the way and it takes forever. This is the way I got the laser aligned and I believe if I turn this off I can show you the line that I scored in the block of wood. Yes. There we go. So that is a focused aligned laser. Now ready to cut. Yay. Like I say, a bit of a long video this. Um, sorry it took forever to go through all of this, um, but it's a difficult process and this approach certainly helps. Oh, and as a final note, I completely forgot to talk about this. Um, when you align the final mirror, that is the mirror inside the laser head, I like to do a similar thing where I put tape on the end of the tube, there is no lens, and I mark the middle, and I just tweak the laser head mirror until I see the dot, the burnt dot, or in the case of the visible laser, the red dot, hitting the center of the target. Um, it's difficult to see because obviously the tube's pointing down, so I put a mirror underneath it and I can look at what's happening. And that's pretty much it. As soon as you've got all of that done, you put your lens in and then hope that the beam gets focused through the tiny hole at the end of the air assist nozzle. That's all there is to it.